Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 18th of February, 2011, and we're live here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this market. It's just uh, uh, incredibly resilient, and um, you know, we there's really not a whole lot to say about this market other than it continues to be in a fantastic uptrend, and our job is con- uh, continues to be the same as well, which is to manage risk. This is the level we were looking at um, as far as uh, what I was talking to subscribers last night is, you know, this market continues to do what it's supposed to do, which is find uh, support along prior resistance levels. And today, that 134 level, which was also the daily pivot uh, right here at 134, we found support just above that level. And what turned out to be, you know, near the two day volume weighted average price as well. But uh, the market closed with strength here after that uh, little sell off uh, that we saw late afternoon. But that little brief sell-off only brought us down to a prior level of resistance so once again we're seeing this market uh, you know it's making our job as far as the market goes easier in terms of that we want to see what we want to be focused on as I've been saying is following price action and is the market holding above the levels that it's supposed to be and as long as it continues to make these higher lows you, you just keep raising your stops basically and managing risk and listening to the message of the market the message of the market market uh, is that uh, you know volume has been lighter today it was heavier uh, because we had options expiration uh, but you know we've we've seen markets go down on lighter volume in the past it's not or on diminishing volume it's really that that that's something that's that this market has been actually pretty good at doing um, is is rising in, in low uh, low volume environments we saw that uh, pretty much all of uh, 2009 we saw diminished volume and we've been seeing diminishing volume here on this leg higher here so again you know volume yeah it's important it's in particular for individual stocks but uh, as far as the overall market goes a lot of people like to squawk about low volume and that sort of thing but you know they talk about it the whole way up and uh, then eventually they say it was because there was light volume and the conviction wasn't there uh, or whatever but uh, you know we, we had spoken about the um, measured move price objective this week that uh, from the August lows to the um, November high uh, that we take it from this low here and that gives us a price objective near 136.25 that still looks reasonable and, and again I think only a fool would sell short there into this type of strength but it's a potential level that this market could uh, run in, into you know that, that other people are looking at it close enough that maybe they're going to be looking at it and saying well if it if it gets to that level I'll uh, offer supply or um, you know begin to sell short or back off the gas in terms of uh making new purchases but that 136.25 ish area you know you could look at it and, and imagine that uh, it might mean something because of this prior uh, support back in here and perhaps that will be the area but looking for resistance uh, we only know resistance after the fact we we don't know what resistance will be we only have potential resistance the bigger potential level of resistance in this market if it continues to move higher I think would be up near about the 140 level now that's a you know still 10 points away big move but uh, you know what is that eight percent it's not that big of a move I suppose but only be I, I would say that it would be a bigger level because it's it's seen more significance assigned to it um, during uh, previous trading back in 2007 2008 but again those are potential levels where this market would go they're not price targets having a price target and adhering to a price target um, you know having a price target is good for a risk reward scenario but uh, in a momentum driven market the primary objective is to uh, you know just listen to the message of the market and manage risk and, and, and look at the definition of trend and as far as long as we continue to see that this market holds above a rising five day moving average and uh, that we're making higher highs and higher lows we give it the benefit of the doubt until that's broken so next week I think uh, well we have a holiday shortened week um, we only have four days next week and, and by the way um, hope to see and meet some of you at the uh, Traders Expo in New York. Um, I'll be speaking Monday morning at 8 a.m. And uh, there's a lot of uh, good speakers there as well. Uh, you know, a lot of people that you see here on Stock Twits, including Joe Fami and Marie uh, Bella from SMB is going to be talking. Uh, Gil Morales and his partner, uh, Dr. K, who wrote the How to Trade Like William O'Neill, are going to be there. 
Jim Altucher, who's been just having some really wild, uh, fun posts on uh, his site, is going to be there as well. And anyways, uh, Stock Twits will be hosting a uh, cocktail hour Monday evening as well. So if you're around, uh, say you know, come on by and say hello. But uh, back to the market, S and P 500. It's it's in an uptrend. It's uh, you know, I did a post two weeks ago, I think, that said broken record was the title of it, and I forget the price of of the market back there, but I, I think it was somewhere you know in this in this area that it, you know it's a broken record that uh, we're in an uptrend and higher highs and higher lows continue to hold, and really you don't have to adjust your plan much. You always have to be aware that hey, it's light volume, it's getting extended. You know, maybe the things running on fumes but it's still running it hasn't begun to sputter yet it hasn't begun to slow down and and show any uh, weakness you know we get these little intraday pullbacks that people start rushing to the uh, uh, triple inverses and that sort of thing and 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 you know for for a scalp I suppose that's okay but uh, you know when we've got this primary trend so strong it's 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 gonna be difficult to uh, uh, make make money on the short side the Nasdaq was a little bit of an underperformance former here today but you can see uh, it held right around the area where it was supposed to find uh, support which was this you know this little band of uh, prior resistance in here um, so we you know 55 58 50 I think next week we want to keep an eye on that we've still got a rising five-day moving average we are extended um, and you know what would we expect here well if we break this 58 50 level then the then the next level would be probably near about 58 10 or so if we get down towards 5810 and that fails to hold well the bigger level that that we would really want to focus on is down near this 5730 to 5750 level this is the bigger uh, area of significance uh, for the queues and that's you know if we if we got down to towards that level at uh, you know 57 and a quarter 57 and a half where does that put us on the daily time frame 57 and a half is you know right in here that we've got this uh, you know down towards maybe the 20 day moving average but this will be our bigger level going forward for the next couple of weeks, I, I believe. Um, as as I've pointed out, we're at uh, you know a decade or so high in the queues. The Nasdaq Composite, though, the the Comp X. Um, is a little bit wider or, or, or broader uh, representation of the NASDAQ. This high back in 2007 was 2861. We came, I guess, 20 points from hitting that this week. And uh, just, you, you know, that that's a potential area where uh, maybe people are focused. We, we saw this week uh, some incredible statistics that the, this is, you know, for the S&P 500, the fastest that the uh, S&P 500 has doubled since... Uh, in the last 70 years off of these uh, lows from March of 2009. It, it, it's doubled faster than any other point um, in the last 70 years. So uh, amazing statistic. And, um, you know, I had pointed out that the uh, Russell 2000 was within just a couple percentage points of an all-time high here. And, uh, you know, the, the Russell 2000, I always look at the, um, uh, you know, the Basically, the regular, uh, or what I consider to be the the Russell, the regular Russell 2000. There is also a, a Russell growth and a Russell value, but uh, you know what's most li- widely watched is represented um, by the IWM or by the uh, RUT.X. And the RUT.X, you can see, uh, you know, is basically the same exact thing. The IWM we can trade RUTX. Um, you know, you can't trade uh, by itself. You can trade options on it, that sort of thing, futures. But uh, the Russell 2000, just a couple points, uh, percentage points away from uh, an all-time high here. And that might be getting some, uh, you know, attention in the backs of people, my, people's mind as well that, you know, maybe you get this NASDAQ composite up to the 2007 highs and then you get the Russell up towards its all-time highs. And maybe they run it a little bit through these levels, but uh, we could be getting close. It, it just pays uh, to, to, to have that heightened sense of of risk management and aware awareness of what you're buying. This week, I had you know pointed out a couple stocks. Uh, for instance, Intel. Um, Intel, we've you know I, I've been talking about it for a week and a half now, um, based on 
one we've got the weekly inverted head and shoulders pattern and uh, this you know what's turning the right shoulder here you can see we've got in another inverted head and shoulders pattern that's that's formed in there uh, let's look at that daily chart so we've, we've we've spoken about this enough I don't have to spend too much time on it but we've broken that neckline and we broke the $22 level and uh, really you know this is where the buyers really took control of it at about 2190 in my mind um, you know if you're in there I'd say now your stop probably about 2150 worst case uh, but Intel looks like it's finally on its way it certainly underperformed the uh, average semiconductor stock this is a weekly Intel and this is the weekly SMH so you can see the SMH you know which has its own inverted head and shoulders pattern um, I, I think talking about a, a target that that's you know equal to the height of this though is you know, you could look at it, but I mean, to to think that you can hold on and reach that price objective to me seems a little bit aggressive, and and maybe uh, makes a mockery of price targets and inverted head and shoulders patterns uh, to 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 get that aggressive. But here's where we are in the semiconductor index. It has been an important level in the past, and it certainly has the potential to become resistance. But uh, thus far, we've seen you know really no slowdown in the uptrend. This week again, we ha we saw a pattern of of uh, of prior resistance uh, broken and holding a support here today on the on the final day of the week. So we we still have the buyers firmly in control of the semiconductors. You can look at that weekly chart all you want and justify that we're at resistance. But until prices break down and start turning away from this level, it's just a potential area where we would expect to encounter uh, supply. So you don't go uh, full in buying here, obviously. Where does the market come from? Where does it have the potential to go? Well, it's just come from 24 up to 36, 37. So we've seen a 50% rally here, 50% plus, uh, really uninterrupted. I mean, the, the biggest correction we had uh, occurred back, back in December, January, and that was more of a time correction than price correction. We've seen this 20-day moving average really hold beautifully this whole, uh, this, this entire time. I and mean, we might have closed one day below the 20-day moving average. When we do close below the 20-day moving average, I think it will uh, likely be the catalyst for some uh, uh, bigger pro profit taking that maybe we get all the way down to the 50 day moving average but uh, you know picking tops again it's it's a tough business uh, I, you know a lot of people thought the top was made in silver that silver had this speculative rally this blow off top in here and, and they were calling this a, a top um, you know three four weeks ago but silver has recovered remarkably well in this prior support which uh, you know, a lot of people who said, hey, it's at resistance, let's sh sell short. Well, those people got squeezed, it shook out uh, longs, and now we've got this silver market back to making higher highs and higher lows. And I think when you see a, a move this strong, um, I think you're, you're getting a lot of uh, short capitulation in there. And it, and it sets up the case, as I, I mentioned on Wednesday, that maybe gold is going to follow silver. Gold has broken... Uh, what was supposed to be its resistance near this 50-day moving average. And it seems to be following the script that was outlined by uh, Silver when Silver got uh, above its prior support level here uh, about three, four weeks ago. So gold looks to be about right here. If you take a look at silver, here's where we are obviously. Now keep this in your mind and we'll take a look at gold next. And you can see this is about where it looks gold is. We broke this prior support which had been resistance, rallied a couple days, and looking back at silver once again, you know, we had rallied a couple days there and then just charged higher. So perhaps gold is headed uh, to, to new highs as well. I, I don't consider myself a gold trader. I look at it because a, you know, a lot of people ask me about it and it's widely followed. But uh, um, I would, you know, if I had to trade gold, I would be long in here. There's, uh, especially when you look at the weekly chart and you see it's still, you know, it's still holding that longer term uh uptrend that we had a little shake out here and this is something that uh, Stephen Place had, had pointed out in a tweet I recall uh, that he said you know it, you know watch gold when it's when it breaks these important support levels uh, that a lot of times you get an ensuing rally because we get people leaning the wrong way so this you know this recent sell-off right here looks very similar to what we had seen back in July August in uh, GLD and, and obviously from there we kind of followed this you know we're, we're, we're starting to follow that script a little bit 
almost, you know, you look at this kind of as if this is where we were right now, we got back above that 50 day moving average. And this is about where GLD is now compared to uh, the last time it kind of followed this, you know, what looks to be an unfolding script. Um, Anyways, the uh, what else? Uh, the financials uh, continue to hold up very well. Last week, I'd said you know we're not at a uh, you know double top. Basically, last week I said you know look at look at look at uh, the financials. Look at you know the blogs this weekend. I said last Friday, and you'll you'll see people talking about a double top. Um, it's just an area where we found a little resistance last year, and so far this market is holding up very well. It's still in a great uptrend, and my opinion is that it's much easier for this market to go up to eighteen and a half than it is to drop back down to fifteen. Now that's my opinion. But how do you trade it? Well, you look at this thing and you say it's 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 finding some resistance here. So maybe pushing past that level next week. Worst case, stop down here about 17 bucks. The most important part of that plan is not the price objective of 18 and a half, but here's where I'm going to take action. And if I do take action there, where do I set my stop so that if I take a loss, that it's an acceptable. Uh, level of risk and I'm not going to be out of business. I'm going to be able to come back and repeat, you, you know, f- continue to find the low risk cra- trades. And that's what I do on alpha trends all the time. I don't try to tell people what to trade or when to trade. What I like to do is point out, here's what looks like a good low risk, high probability scenario. Here's how we can enter at the correct time. Not, you know, we don't want to be entering the semiconductors uh, in, in, in my, you know, and actually let's let's take a look at it. Let me just change up the subject for a minute because the uh, I'll, I'll just use the TAN uh, for a moment. But I've been talking about the semiconductor stocks. We had earnings this week. And, um, you know, earlier in the week I, I told subscribers, hey, be careful with these semiconductors. They're up, you know, on average, uh, the ones we were looking at were up on an average of, of uh, we were looking at CSIQ. Uh, see, uh, let's see, CSIQ. Um, we're looking at, let me just type these in here. Uh, some of these, uh, uh, Sun Power. Uh, so here's just a, a few of them. Uh, Sun Power, who reported today, and again, you don't want to chase those gaps up after the magnitude of the move we've had. We've been talking about this thing. Uh, what we were talking about about it back in here got stopped out of it, got bullish back on it again right here, and you don't want to chase them after three days. Now, obviously, in this case, you, you could have, but you definitely don't want to be buying that opening gap in here. You want to look at it and say, okay, you know, do I want to buy it on this day? Well, if you're a day trader, maybe, but how do you manage the risk? Where do you put your stop? And you look at it and say, it's gone from 15 to 17. Is this a low risk entry? Well, hindsight is perfect, and we all see the time machine people on Twitter and in chat rooms who, who can nail it perfect in hindsight. But, uh, you know, th- this morning we had. Uh, you know, a stock gap up on on good news. You know, after it had already made a run the, the prior uh, uh, you know four days from 15 to 17 and a half. So it had just experienced a my my brain's fried. What is that percentage wise? About a 15 uh, percent uh, rally in the in in the prior days. So uh, you know, you don't want to buy you don't want to be the dope who buys on the good news and gets excited by a headline you look at the weekly time frame like we did Wednesday and say where does this have the potential to go and I think I, re- I remember saying you know I thought about 18 well it obviously gapped way up beyond that but that's that's where we closed and now this prior support maybe is going to act as resistance while the stock absorbs uh, some of these gains you don't want to you don't want to be the buyer though after the rally. Now, I don't particularly care for this ETF, the TAN. I, I'd much rather get involved in the individual names. Um, but the, the TAN, if you take a look at it as, as an aggregate of what the average solar uh, stock uh, looks like, it, it's looking pretty bullish in here. It's, we're, we're fighting this level from last year. We've got earnings. It's extended here. So, you know, I think that solar is. You know, you get these things to pull back. That this prior resistance near about 860, uh, even the 870 next week, it pulls back down into that area. You don't want to buy on the pullback, but you want to look at it after the pullback, and then once the momentum begins to to uh, uh, 
uh, re reassert itself to the upside. But now, beautiful uptrend. Now, you know, looking at this 10 minute time frame, higher highs and higher lows, just what you're looking for. There's a lot of uh, components, though. TSL started selling off a little bit today. It's It's got this, you know, it's had this big run. A little further consolidation down to 28 would be an awesome thing for this. Uh, first solar reports uh, on the 24th, GTO toy told me um, after I incorrectly said yesterday uh, or last night but uh, you know first solars had this run of 130 to 175 do you want to be buying it now or maybe wait for a little bit uh, of a pullback but you know especially after you you know what we want to look for is we want to look at these rallies and then as they pull back now where are we are we at a, a good pullback point or are we closer to one of these higher highs right now? So you want to, uh, you know, look to, uh, uh, you know, look for the the shorter term time frames to anticipate the proper time to to uh, to, uh, to to anticipate the proper time to participate. Basically, um, back to one of my favorite subjects recently of. Uh, the foolhardiness of trying to pick a top. Um, it's no different than trying to pick a bottom. I, and I, I've, I've made fun of the UNG for years. I've made fun of it, uh, but, but, but just made fun of the constant calls that it's a bottom, it's a low, uh, it's a good value, it's whatever, it's a flawed product. I don't, you know, they, they've got a, uh, it, it doesn't even really follow UN, uh, the natural gas uh the way it's supposed to from what I understand but all I know is it's clearly been in a significant downtrend we're looking at the weekly chart here and I've got a 10 20 30 40 week so this 40 week is equal to basically a 200 day moving average and it's just been in a downtrend saying from an investment standpoint you look at it, sure you can get some bounces on the daily charts but on the weekly it's going to typically fail and now here this week we're down to all-time lows on a closing basis uh, once again, you know, once again, this this thing is just a a horrible piece of garbage. The only people that that have bought and held uh, are the people that bought for this 20 minute period on Thursday. Those are the only people who can feel like, well, maybe I've got the top. And you know, just again, embrace the trend and 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 you know. That that's the the main story that I'm gonna always stick to. Embrace the trend, manage risk. Um, we'd seen the uh, the rare earths. Uh, you know, MCP uh, has been the leader in there. They did a secondary, and um, you know this. I, I talk a lot about the five day moving average and the direction of the five day moving average, and it rallies above a five day moving average while the five day moving average is declining. Or typically guilty till proven innocent. Well, I wasn't expecting this to happen. I was actually kind of hoping that maybe uh, MCP could kind of recover a little bit in here, uh, pull back, and then set up for a good move above this level next week. It didn't happen though. So AVL has been, you know, the the leader in here. But this one broke down today. It broke support. It broke this prior resistance level where you know these were these were all time highs up in here, and now it's coming in a little bit. Probably needs to correct. Same with Shizzle. Uh, SHZ. This one's just been a dog since their secondary offering, and it looked like maybe it was going to get going. It, it never broke uh, that seven dollar and twenty cent level. On uh, Thursday, we were looking at you know if it could break seven oh eight, we were going to cheat by, uh, but it just you know held below that declining five day moving average. So. Anyways, those. Uh, let's see, oh, what else did I want to talk about? I'd mentioned this one stock as well, PQ. Uh, I said yesterday on Twitter that you know, no matter what the time frame you look at, it looks like it's got some potential. There's a. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. It's it's up against uh, this level where it's found some resistance over the last year and a half, but pushing through here, it looks like it should be in a pretty reasonable position to get up towards 10 bucks a share it seemed like it was going to go yesterday and, and you know as it it got back above that five day moving average and held so we had a little bit of a shake out below it now you know i'd say worst case stop if you're involved in this pq down near about eight dollars and 25 cents what i was saying yesterday is my stop was 840 but i'd say worst case stop underneath this little shakeout low that we've seen uh you know that 
basically held that 10-day moving average, uh, at least on a closing basis. So worst case stop would go below there. It's got a good volume pattern. We'd seen volume return to it on Thursday. It just uh, maybe requires a little bit of patience before it's going to get going higher. And next week, perhaps above 860 is where uh, the buyers really sink their teeth into this and don't let go of it. But um, uh, let's see. Oh, one other one I wanted to mention was this VTG. Someone asked me about it on Wednesday, and I said, you know, it's dead money until it gets above a buck ninety-five. I might have even said two bucks a share. I don't remember. Um, but lo and behold, Thursday, what happened? Well, the stock was strong, uh, and and I bought it actually at one ninety-five right here, and then I felt like a complete jerk right here at one ninety-one. I was thinking, am I going to be the sucker falls for this thing again? Anyways, it rallied up nicely, pulled back pretty hard today, and actually below uh, it was. It, I didn't like to see it closing below the two-day volume weighted average price. The reason for that is because since the event, the event being on Thursday we had this big up movement and continued strength through today, then it just got this, the snot kicked out of it here. Um, and I would have liked to have seen it hold there. I did buy some in here today at two, uh, 205, I believe, 207. I, I think my average was about 206 in there. And I, I don't feel like I, you know, I don't think it was a great purchase. The bigger level still remains $2.26. If you look at the weekly chart and you look at the volume it's trading here and the potential for this thing, it's easy to get excited about this stock. I mean, it looks very similar to uh, uh, you know the LNG that, that uh, we've spoken about uh, off and on here. LNG. Um, I was talking about actually more in January. I, I didn't do a good job holding LNG because they said they were doing a secondary offering and it kind of scared me away. So I haven't really been participating the last couple of weeks. But LNG, you can see here on the weekly chart, kind of looks, you know, that this 225 level we're talking about in, in VTG, um, they look similar. But there's still, you know, I, I don't have a full position. I think uh, what what is likely to happen in here is we continue to consolidate under here, maybe build some pressure from underneath at that 226 level, and perhaps in a week or two we could get above 226, and then maybe it would be in a, uh, a, a good position to hold on to some gains and, and get, get moving higher. Um, let's see, I had some notes here. I don't know where they are. Um, but I guess that was uh, about it. So I'm going to wish everyone a good long weekend. And uh, if you're in New York on uh, Monday, be sure to come say hello. And uh, if not, I'll talk to you Wednesday. Thanks, everybody.